Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm very happy to have you here guys. Now as you can see today I want to film the second part of trying out affordable summertime fragrances. Now in all honesty I'm filming this while outside the storm is coming so maybe it's not the best timing but uh, let's hope that the good weather will come eventually. Now today I have nine fragrances that I want to try out here with you not for the first time because I've already tried all these fragrances prior on my skin uh, so to, today I will try them on paper but yes nine fragrances from various brands some for women some marketed for women some marketed for men some marketed as unisex a little bit of everything uh, some from Ahmed El Maghribi some from Paris Corner a few from Armagh so yes, let's just start. Um, by the way, like I've mentioned in the previous video, if you have tried any of the fragrances that I will talk about in today's video, I would love to hear your feedback on the fragrance. Let me know if you enjoy it. Let me know how do you find the performance. Let me know how does it compare to other fragrances that might be similar to this one. So yes, I would love to read your feedback. Uh, now, yes, I have them all uh, here in this box from Keali. And you know what? Let's just, let me don't, let me not look and just choose one. Okay. Okay, let's just start with Marine from Ahmed El Maghribi. Um, let me actually put my coffee aside and get one of these. Hold on. Yes, and get one of these uh, little pieces of paper. Now, uh, here are the notes for Marine. Also, if you're watching, thank you for the decans. Um, let's see. Look, to me, this is like the ultimate typical summery fragrance for women. This, you know what this smells like? This smells so fruity to the point that it smells like a fruity lemonade or like a fruit smoothie. To me, it legit smells like you make a lemonade with watermelon or you make a watermelon smoothie and you put a little bit of lime there. It opens up very sweet, very bright, very airy, but quite dense at the same time and ultra fruity. This is very fruity, very sweet. You have here different types of fruity accords, I would say. The one that shines the most at this moment in the opening is the watermelon. To me, it legit smells like a watermelon lemonade in the summer, but not really cold, without the ice, you know? Just imagine like you mix a little bit of lemon with like a lot of watermelon. I also detect in the opening, and I find this aspect quite interesting, I also detect a slight sugary undertone. Here I get it here and there, <laughs> like what, what does this mean? Here I get it here and there, but on my skin I actually get it much more. And the sugariness kind of reminds me of the sugary undertone in Rosie's Vanille from Mancera. Uh, but it's just a hint of that. So you have the watermelon, you have a slight sugary hint, and you also have this like bowl with red fruits, like a bowl filled with red fruits. Imagine like you're making that like watermelon lemonade, you know, you're like putting some red fruits there because you also get this like crisp, not tangy, but you know this like specific smell of red fruits that like cold and slightly crisp red fruity facet, you have it here as well. And as this one starts to develop more, especially on the skin, I start to detect this, the smell of not watermelon, but melon, the yellow one, you know. Uh, but it doesn't smell like actual melon to me. If you have tried those... Um, more affordable ice creams, you know, those not really the, the most high quality ones, you know, in the flavor of melon, you have that exact scent here as well. So it's more like the scent of artificial melon than the actual scent of melon, you know, but I feel like it smells very beautiful, very beautiful, very fun, very girly, very feminine, quite playful, definitely something for the summertime. Definitely something that's very easy to enjoy. You don't have to think twice about it. Now, the only thing to keep in mind with this fragrance, this smells youthful. And I don't want to say that it smells juvenile, but it smells, bleh, but it smells very youthful. Um, so you need to appreciate fragrances like Little Hearts, like Jasmine Wisp, like uh, Fantasy by Britney Spears, any ultra sweet fruity fragrance you should appreciate these types of fragrances to fully appreciate this fragrance. If you're one who's more, let's just say, you will enjoy fragrances that are a bit more mysterious, that are a bit more complex, perhaps fragrances that are a bit more serious, you know, this is the opposite of this. This is simplistic, this is fun, this is easygoing, outgoing, this is happy, this is uplifting, you know, it's legit the opposite of a serious fragrance. Now, I also detect, uh, I also detect some like, how to call them, like a dewy aquatic facets, but it's almost like 
it's not like blue freshy type of aquatic facet it's almost like the aquatic dewy facet comes from the fruit you know comes from the fruit juice in a sense you know yes i think it's beautiful i think it's very girly i think it's very feminine performance is great honestly i have smelled it on my skin for more than five hours on clones i haven't tested it honestly but if i were to wear this fragrance i would feel the need to layer it with something i feel like because on its own unless i'm going somewhere like on a holiday somewhere at the beach during the daytime but unless unless that situation i would feel the need to layer it and i actually have some layering ideas in mind with this fragrance i was thinking to layer this one with red velvet from maison asrar that one is an inspiration of burberry hair from burberry i think now this leads me to actually to my next point i feel like this fragrance yes it's a beautiful fragrance on its own but if you actually prefer fragrances with a bit more complexity in a way this works amazing as a topper for any fragrances that you want to give them this like fruity summery sweetness this would work amazing as a topper uh, now the bottle looks quite quite gender neutral i feel like but if you're a man look if you love the smell of watermelon of watermelon of melon of red fruits uh, a little bit of sugar and a crisp mask then you would enjoy this fragrance but if you're not really one who appreciates fruity fragrances i think you would prefer to smell this one on a woman more than on yourself i feel like but yeah beautiful on its own oh yes uh, let me go back to the layering ideas this works amazing as a topper because it brings out the sweetness it brings out the fruitiness i feel like it brings out that like playfulness from fragrances um like i told you a combo that i had in mind is with uh, red velvet from maison asrar i'm really curious to uh, see how these two would smell like together because this is watermelon with melon with some red fruits and crisp mask in the background um and that one is like a strawberry basically that one is an inspiration of burberry hair from burberry so it's like a strawberry mixed with some like sweet citruses in a sense mixed with something that's like quite translucent transparent a slight oak mossy undertone in the background so yes another combo that i had in mind with this one i think it would work very well layered with amber wood gold edition from Alharamain or with any inspiration of herba pura now let's say herba pura is your signature scent or let's just say it's maybe it's one of the scents that you love the most it's one of the dearest ones to your heart but perhaps you've smelled it on a lot of people now either the og either the inspirations there are a lot of fragrances in the same scent family and maybe you would like it to give it let's just say that maybe you are looking to give it a bit of something else of something extra you know without changing its dna too much this is like a fruity lemonade but not not lemonade in a sense that it's very lemony even though it does have a slight citrus tinge in the background but more lemonade in a sense that it smells like a summer drink you know like it smells like you make a smoothie out of uh, watermelon melon some red fruits you know the whole shebang yeah it just smells like this so yeah i do like it performance is amazing honestly i feel like in general fragrances from ahmed el maghribi the ones that i have tried at least all of them are very oily so longevity is not an issue especially if you spray them on your clothes your clothes will smell like this fragrance for days um projection i actually this fragrance kind of projects not let's just say not for like 10 hours or anything like this no but i feel like in the first two to three hours it projects pretty well after that let's just say people have to come more close to you to smell you but again you guys for the price keep in mind this is a very affordable fragrance i feel like for the price it's definitely worth it but the key here you need to love fruity fragrances not fruity fragrances with some flower facets perhaps with a with perhaps with some notes that give it a bit more depth or a bit more complexity no those like typical summery fruity fragrances if you love this kind of fragrances i have a feeling you will enjoy this fragrance a lot a lot for for someone who loves fruity fragrances this is beautiful okay let me choose without looking let me choose another fragrance let me go with a smaller sample okay this one is from our mouth this is the vanity femme essence yeah let me actually take another one of these let's see See, this is not fruity. I feel like this is more sweet citruses. Honestly, I was surprised when I smelled this fragrance and I was surprised because I feel like just recently I've mentioned in a video that Armaf is not known for the most smooth fragrances, you know? But when I tried this fragrance, I was actually pleasantly surprised because it's quite smooth. I don't feel like it has any... 
harsh synthetic artificial like a rough facets in a sense it's quite smooth so yeah i was very surprised honestly so good job armaf <laughs> no yeah uh here are the notes for this fragrance look this one i feel like it reminds me like if you know the dna of la flor bouquet by afnan which is an inspiration of uh, Flor Narcotique by Ex Nihilo. You kind of have like a slight idea as to how this fragrance smells. Like I feel like it definitely smells peachy. That one smells like peach iced tea. Here, imagine the same like peachy iced tea vibe, but with a deeper base, like a richer, denser base. The other one from Athnan, I feel like it's much lighter, much breezier, much thinner in a sense. Whereas with this one, this one is a bit more robust you know without having any challenging notes this is again your typical french like fragrance nothing no wood no heavy spices no saffron no rose nothing like this now to me this smells like that like peachy iced tea vibe with a beautiful bright airy clean jasmine that's quite present it's quite pronounced but it again it doesn't have any indolic facet it doesn't have anything challenging about it and with some sweet citruses and when i mean sweet citruses i'm talking about like on orange on like orange mandarin orange this kind of sweet citruses it's quite light it has this sparkling effervescent effect from the citruses but at the same time it has a beautiful clean jasmine and it also has in the base some like richer ambery facets in a sense not that it smells like hmm, how to describe this not that it smells like how an amber based fragrance would smell like let's just say an amber forward fragrance that would smell resinous it would smell balsamic you know slightly vanillic no i feel like this has quite a cleaned amber cleaned around the edges amber according to sense that it just gives the fragrance a slight warmth a slight density and a slight richness like basically a slight thickness to the base in a sense you know so it's not just like light and airy and breezy you know but this doesn't smell like uh, Eternal Oud by Lataf. I know it's not that kind of amber. That one is definitely made around an amber accord. This one, I feel like you just have a slight amber hint in the background, enough to give support to the other notes. So like I told you, they don't just like float, you know, you don't have this like cloud-like sensation. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is definitely much more elegant. I feel like this is quite a timeless fragrance, very feminine, but also I feel like women of all ages could enjoy this fragrance. Yeah, legit, it doesn't have anything harsh about it it doesn't have anything sharp about it it's quite smooth very well blended you know i told you i was actually surprised when i smelled this fragrance but you know it's actually a good thing because it shows that they can have like more refined fragrances as well you know not all of them have that like strong artificial blast yeah you guys it's beautiful and i feel like as it develops you start to get more of the warmth you know you lose that like effervescent sparkling citrusy facet i feel like that orangey mandarin orange facets move into the background the peachy that peach like tea like vibe is still present the jasmine is still there but it gets slightly warmer because now a bit of that amber accord shines more it's slightly vanillic slightly musky slightly powdery as well yeah i feel like um as like a baseline, if you love fragrances like Voce Viva from Valentino, if you love fragrances like Amirate Larab, if you love fragrances like, let me think, what else? Hmm. What other fragrances? And now I forgot all of them out of a sudden. <laughs> uh, if you love fragrances, if you love florals, if you love florals with some citruses um, but usually let's just say compared to Voce Viva and compared to um, La Fleur Bouquet which I find that those two actually have similarities this is slightly the citrus is here in those you have bergamot here you have sweet citruses but not overly sweet just like in, sweet enough uh, and they uh, the, the other two fragrances the, the the other two fragrances dry down to a slight soft oak mossy facet mixed with some like very soft shy dry woody facets uh, with the florals this one dries down to an amber accord but again they just add a slight warmth now enough about this fragrance i feel like i've talked a lot about it let me grab a sip of coffee and then let me choose another fragrance let's see what do i choose okay this one i don't like it <laughs> uh, okay i have here sandalwood from paris corner yeah 
look, not that it's a bad fragrance, but compared, I mean, look, the thing is, when you judge a fragrance, yes, you judge it on its own in a sense, but let's just remember that there are like thousands of fragrances out there. So it's like naturally that you judge it compared to other fragrances that you have tried from this brand uh, with a similar scent profile, you know? And again, like to put in a few words, this one on its own, it's not really a bad, bad fragrance to me, but is it something that I'm like, you need to try this fragrance, it's the best thing out? No, honestly, no. It reminds me, what other fragrances does this one remind me of? It reminds me of another fragrance. It slightly reminds me of Adib by Latafa, but I don't think, is it that one? Cause yeah, look, let's spray it. Oh, by the way, I almost dropped it. By the way, if you have this fragrance and you love it, please don't get offended. Like. You need to understand fragrance is something so subjective some of the fragrances that i freaking love in this life people around me hate them you know and i'm fine with that and i still wear them and i still love them don't get so triggered don't be so upset just because a random person on the internet doesn't like a fragrance that you love you know like it's not such a big of a deal you know like i can dislike something and you can love something and we can like agree to disagree or not even like you can easily wear it you know um I always say like wear whatever makes you happy you know so yeah that's what i do look this one opens up quite this is something that i don't like quite sharp quite alcoholy with something that smells like crisp clean like really crisp really clean with that alcohol blast kind of goes cheap a little bit with again a slight clean sharp floral facet in the background with a slight peachiness but again deep deep in the background it's quite breezy it's quite light it's quite bright to me you know what it smells like it smells it smells medicinal and i feel like that strong alcohol blast from from the opening only emphasizes this medicinal facet even more and i'm not a fan of medicinal fragrances like i remember when i tested this fragrance i wrote potentially headache triggering and now I understand why because it smelled medicinal when I tested it I didn't I didn't have to say like I got that aspect but I couldn't uh, put it into words but now when I smell it I know why I wrote potentially headache triggering you know because it has a medicinal blast but this fragrance has quite a development now look uh, this is this is the magic magic wood collection I feel like from Paris Corner I only have tried two fragrances. I have this one and then I have the Magic Wood in Kalimat. Something that I have noticed with both of these fragrances, the opening, uh, the opening is not the smoothest one, it's not the most refined one, it's not the most elegant one. The opening is quite, it's quite rough, you know? <laughs> you need to have patience with this fragrance. It does get better, actually it does get better as it develops. Um, and I feel like both with this fragrance and with the other one that I have mentioned, they're the best in the dry down, in my opinion, and from what I have seen. Now, yeah, see, now that like crisp, clean facet toned down, it does smell slightly like some clean white florals with a slight clean incense facet in the background. A slight spicy tinge, something powdery, something a little bit woody. But I remember on my skin, the more it developed, it started to get this like soft suede-like woody facet on my skin. And again, it was kind of like out of nowhere in a sense. Look, I don't want to spend, honestly, I don't want to spend too much time on this fragrance because it's not, it's not one that I particularly enjoy. It's not one that I would necessarily recommend to you. Uh, I feel like you can find better fragrances when it comes to Paris Corner fragrances. And again, if you are one who gets headaches easily, remember, potentially headache triggering, you know? <laughs> yeah, it opens up. Basically, if I would have to describe how this fragrance smells like to me, you have this like soft, peachy, muted sweetness deep in the background. You just get hints of it. You have this beautiful, like breezy, clean, bright, crisp white florals, like imagine jasmine, like basically like more of an abstract white floral chord. Something clean and bright, a slight musky tinge. And from time to time, I get this like soft suede-like woody facet, but it's quite, 
it's present but it's not deep you know it's more like a drier suede like a cord you know yeah performance honestly i don't know how long it lasts uh, i remember when i was testing this one again for three and a half hours i could easily smell it but look honestly i haven't done like a proper wear test for this fragrance would i advise you to get it honestly no i mean I, I do think you can find better fragrances, you know, uh, but if you're really curious about it, my advice would be get a sample of this one and see for yourself. Okay, let me not look, let me get another one, let's see. Um, oh yeah, this one is Super Crush from Paris Corner. You guys, I got a lot of questions about this fragrance. I don't know honestly why I haven't talked sooner about it because I got this decant when I started to speak about Paris Corner for the first time on my channel with um, with like campfire, with what other fragrances, like Fire Your Desire. I purchased this decant way back then. Uh, Oh, by the way, this was not sent to me by Dubai Collection, but I have purchased it from Dubai Collection. But if you... I really like this fragrance. If you want to try out Paris Corner fragrances in Europe, uh, check out Dubai Collection. I will link their websites down below. Feel free to use my discount code if you would like to save up some money. They have full bottles at amazing prices, but they also have 2ml, 5ml and 10ml decants at amazing prices. You guys, you basically you can get like a travel spray, like legit a travel spray version of all the fragrances from Paris Corner on their website uh, and not even Paris Corner they have many more brands uh, but I will leave their website down below to check them out if you're interested now this is super crush can you guess what it is an inspiration of I will give you a few seconds yes you guessed it instant crush you guys this smells legit like instant crush from Mancera like I have that fragrance in my collection I love it um, I used it a lot, so I'm very familiar with how it smells. I even have a backup bottle of that fragrance. Yeah, usually this is something I do, you know, like when I really love a fragrance and I find another bottle of it for an amazing price, I'm like, why not buy it as well, you know? Now look, to me, I remember when I compare them side by side, of course, you do detect some like slight differences, you know, but in all honesty, you guys, if you wear this one, in its yard, in its trail, it smells just like instant crush. Just like instant crush. So yeah, to me, this smells like, I didn't even uh, took this paper to my nose and I still could smell it, like easily smell it. Look, the only thing is, keep in mind, it's instant crush, but the opening is a little bit more alcoholic, but the alcohol does tone down actually. And it's almost, not that it's, look, compared to instant crush, instant crush, it's like, the one of the beast modes of the beast modes you know it's really strong strong in terms of scent profile strong in terms of performance yeah longevity oh my god i can actually taste the fragrance it doesn't taste so good uh, instant crush it's very strong this one is strong but not really up to that level imagine like an instant crush a bit more stretch in a way but yeah it smells like instant crush and you know if you have smelled instant crush you get the same to me, Instant Crush smells like a gingerbread house. Yes, like legit a gingerbread cookie house. You have the ginger, you have a slight sweetness in a way, you have the spiciness, you know, but you also get this like translucent, transparent, something reminiscent to the accord used in Baccarat Rouge, you know, that's quite like I told you, translucent, transparent, slightly oak mossy, slightly not ambery, but it's like how to explain it's like a dense and full but with a translucency to it it's not like fully opaque in a sense you know but this one is a bit more vanillic slightly more powdery with that like ginger it has that like airy sweetness as well from the saffron it's definitely sweeter i love how this fragrance smells like honestly i love how this fragrance smells like and i think they are so similar to the point where yes it's redundant to have both if you are wondering um now, to me, this one I can find it locally for around 14 euros, if I remember correctly. Uh, whereas Instant Crush, I can find it now for, because I actually looked up the prices, because I was curious to see how they compare, for 80 something euros. Was it 80 something euros? Nah, it was not. Or was it? 
80 something euros anyways if it's not i will insert here on the screen but here you get 90 ml of fragrance and in instant crush you get 120 ml of fragrance now look it, to me scent wise extremely similar like you would need legit to smell them side by side to be able to pick up nuances and even then when i smell them side by side maybe the ginger in one is slightly more amplified whereas the ginger in the other one is not really as loud you know maybe the uh, one is slightly more complex in a sense with more facet in a way while the other one is slightly less complex maybe the one is a bit more rich robust whereas the other one is a bit more stretched but i'm talking about like small nuances i feel like the scent profile is extremely 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 similar now um what i would say um Clearly, to me, it's redundant to have both, honestly, especially if you, let's just say, if you have the 60 ml, if there is, if you have like a smaller version of Instant Crush and you don't have the budget to spend on Instant Crush, then this one, I think it would replace Instant Crush easily. But if you have the budget, let's just say, let's just say $40 is the most you can spend on a fragrance at the moment uh, and even then I would actually advise you to test it prior so you're not just spending your money on a fragrance that you don't even know how it smells like and you might not even enjoy it you know be smart about it test it uh, but it 40 but if $40 is your budget at the moment definitely get this one performance is great it lasted for around six hours on my skin but the thing is whereas instant crush um that one projects that one like you legit you don't need that many sprays uh if you actually do too many it can be quite suffocating for people around you I'm, i was guilty of that um you don't need a lot of sprays with that fragrance that one projects leaves a sillage longevity is eternal on the skin on clothes like i remember i sprayed instant crush on one of my winter jackets you guys the scent lasted for months honestly um yeah, uh, whereas with this one, longevity is good. I actually get more. I feel like I got, I feel like I got around five to six hours. Uh, but the thing is, it's not. It doesn't pack the punch that Instant Crush packs. You know what I mean? Meaning that it's not as projecting, it's not as robust, as loud, but it's still a loud fragrance on its own. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. I don't want to look. Oh okay this is a heavy one this this one is called Lain by Ahmed El Maghribi okay yeah honestly Loki I was expecting this one to go towards the last few fragrances because this is a heavy fragrance this is a very heavy fragrance beautiful one statement and bold for sure but heavy heavy nonetheless uh again I will try to show you do you see the color of this fragrance can you see that it's slightly milky like you know yeah interesting uh, look this fragrance <clears throat> hold on i'm losing my voice this fragrance this was one of the first heavy woody fragrances that i tried from the brand and i remember back then i feel like this one was almost borderline too much wood for me but since then i've tried so many other wood based fragrances even from the brand they definitely have others uh, with a really with a more pronounced wood accord this is a very strong one i feel like honestly less is definitely more with this one because first of all it's ultra oily and second of all it has a really strong quite skanky wood accord beautifully done the thing about ahmed and maghribi fragrances you guys what i have tried from them they know how to do a beautiful wood accord that doesn't smell cheap in my opinion all these other brands i'm not gonna say names but all their oh wood this wood that but you smell it and it's like a dry woody accord you know but this brand actually knows how to do beautiful wood accords that smell quite realistic to me to me keep in mind i'm no professional yeah this is a very interesting uh mix in my opinion look wood with rose you see a lot wood with spices you come across a lot but the thing is wood with florals and by florals i don't mean rose you don't come across a lot but the brand has a beautiful range for these kind of fragrances you have pearl wood which is a sweet warm wood quite barnyardy quite animalic but it, not the wood that is sweet the wood is not sweet the wood is barnyard and animalic but it's mixed with a beautiful sweet creamy tuberose in a sense and with something something that smells like banana that came from ylang ylang that i later found out uh, but this one this one to me this one in the opening 
you have a beautiful yellow tropical fruity facet you have here a beautiful pineapple nuance that's quite dewy it's quite sweet again that like canned pineapple type of smell with a slight citrus tinge in the background but the citrus to my nose it's almost like a, a bergamot juice you know like you squeeze a little bit of bergamot juice on like few pineapple like ultra ripe pineapple slices because you have this like sweet sour tinge but how to say it's like in the background behind the fruity facet you have here as well a really strong oud accord it's quite rich it's quite woody it's quite dense it does have it does have a slight barnyard facet for sure yeah like i said you have that fruity facet from the pineapple that's quite warm it's slightly dewy very sweet quite a ripe pineapple with a slight bergamot juice you know because you do get like i said that like slightly sour tinge in the background but what i smell a lot here is lilies not lily of the valley not lilac but lilies you know i do detect a really strong rich heady heavy white floral facet that to me smells exactly like lilies if you are familiar with the smell of lily you know that came they can be quite polarizing they are very strong they are very look i don't want to say challenging but if you don't like lilies they can definitely be a challenging smell to digest you know they're not let's just say they're not the most easiest ones to enjoy with you know you do get the smell of lilies with this like natural greenness that they have as well so you get this on a beautiful wood base now the thing is the wood accord here it does have a slight barnyard facet in the background but to me it's like it's deeper it's darker it smells like a very rich woody accord not like a really dry bright and breezy no rich dense robust woody feel with a slight barnyard tinge in the background but you also do detect some like leathery facets as well i don't know if it has listed iris but if it does i'm guessing that's where it might come from or it might come from the wood accord you know because sometimes some certain wood, wood accords can be quite leathery as well yeah it's beautiful it's a statement fragrance it's a bold fragrance i could picture this one being someone's signature fragrance not mine because to me look objectively i do really enjoy how it smells but like subjectively for me that lily smell it's a bit too much for my liking the thing is I, i'm not really the biggest fan of lilies in general i i find their scents a bit overpowering and a bit too much like if you, you know that if you have ever received a bouquet of lilies like if you put them in the kitchen like the scent of them will like infiltrate into the whole house like your legit like your whole house will smell like lilies from that like small bouquet that you have in the kitchen they are so strong in scent you know but yeah and i feel like as this one starts to develop um you lose the dewy facets of the pineapple you are left more with that like ripe sweet facet more you lose that sour bergamot juice and i feel like the fragrance opens up even more now you detect something leathery even more than in the opening and the oud accord really shines now yeah beautiful fragrance you guys beautiful fragrance but it's not something for everyone this is the potential like this has the potential to be a lover lo a love or hate kind of fragrance depending on what you are used to in general depending on what kind of fragrances you like in general i like it i feel like the pineapple facet gives it more of a wearable aspect but again the smell of lilies and the greenness as well but again not greenness like um grass like greenness that specific greenness that certain lilies have you know yeah it's one look if you find this fragrance like if you think this fragrance is interesting if you wanted to try this fragrance look for a sample look for a decant uh don't blind buy this fragrance don't blind buy it because again it's such a polarizing fragrance that if you don't like it you will not wear it ever you know honestly i haven't worn it out look for me i, I can say that the oud accord is polarizing more of more like the white floral part or the lilies uh but it is a polarizing fragrance for sure performances this is a beast mode fragrance honestly the fragrance is from this line i don't i don't remember how the collection is called but you have ain you have zeafati and you have kalema i think they are all beast mode fragrances so if you wanted something beast mode from ahmed al-maghribi that smells refined because it does smell refined it doesn't smell cheap you know it doesn't smell overly synthetic over overly artificial you know overly sharp no it smells quite refined in my opinion so yeah let's see hmm. what should i choose 
what is this oh this is shy from Ahmed El Maghribi look this fragrance again very interesting fragrance more wearable than the previous one I feel like but this is this also has a beautiful oud accord to me truth is again thank you for the decade if you're watching uh, when I smell this fragrance for the first time I kept getting a certain type of smell that it was very familiar to me and I tried to think oh what does this one remind me of uh, I looked at the notes but nothing clicked in my mind at the time until yesterday or two days before if you like I smelled it again because I knew I wanted to film this video and then it clicked you guys this to put it in a to put it in a few simplistic words, to me this smells like Madawi from Arabian Oud. Now I had to take a short break but I'm back. I was talking about Shai from Ahmed El Maghribi and I was telling you that this fragrance to me is a more unisex and a more deeper darker version of Madawi by Arabian Oud. First few times I tried this fragrance I kept smelling something that to me it was very familiar but I couldn't like in my mind there wasn't a click you know as to what fragrance it reminded me of but I feel like not yesterday but like two days ago when I was trying out this fragrance again because I knew I wanted to film the video that's when it just clicked it smells so similar to Madawi but how to say imagine the DNA of Madawi Basically, my Madawi, if you haven't tried it, it smells like pineapple, but a more, how to say, like a slight sweet, slightly, not really fresh, but more like a dewy, slightly sweet pineapple. Not that like uh, canned pineapple, that like ultra ripe pineapple. It's a more of a mellow sweetness in a sense. You have that type of pineapple there with a slight green freshness, with some musky facets. In the dry down, you have a slight green touch from patchouli, but very soft, very muted, nothing over the top, nothing too challenging. Uh, to me, Madawi, I remember when I first tried that fragrance, it reminded me I mean, not that it reminded me, but I found some similarities with Herba Pura. But if Herba Pura it's modern, it's loud, it's attention grabbing, it's an attention, it's an attention seeking fragrance. I feel like Madawi is a tad more, more elegant, a tad more timeless in a sense, you know. Now, if you have tried Madawi, imagine Madawi, but much richer, much thicker, much darker, much deeper, you know. So if you imagine this, you kind of have an idea as to how shy it smells like from Ahmed El Maghribi. Now, this one is a fragrance that definitely packs a punch. I don't think it's challenging, but I think, I think it's present. I think it's the kind of fragrance that people will smell it on you, even though it's not, let's just say, any, it's nothing like red tobacco type of performance, you know, or like projection, let's say. Now, let me actually spray it. Look, this one opens up with that same sweet slightly dewy muted pineapple but you get it more in the whiffs in the opening when I smell it very close I get a lot of deep herbal green notes imagine like patchouli oak moss with a slight dry woody facet and something fresh quite fresh quite quite bright but the overall fragrance I feel like in the opening it's quite deep it's quite dark it's quite mysterious and then as it starts to develop on the skin I feel like how to say it's almost like it relaxes a little bit and it opens up and also I feel like it kind of like uh, tames a little bit and in, in the opening low key it's like a little bit all over the place you know and the notes are not in the perfect harmony to my nose but as this fragrance starts to develop on the skin the notes honestly get into a perfect harmony they are balanced nothing is off balance in a way and it gets much smoother much more refined as well so by the way don't judge this fragrance in the first let's just say five minutes when you spray it give it a bit of time for the fragrance to settle on your skin and then it will open up very beautifully now once this fragrance actually gets a chance to open up on your skin you get that same pineapple that you have in madawi you have it here as well with that slight like green apple freshness type of feel so it's slightly crisp as well i do detect something slightly sour like a soft sweet sour bergamot in the background but here you have all these let's just call them brighter lighter area notes in a sense on a really deep rich base and the base to me smells like a mix of patchouli uh, in the opening you got more oak moss but I feel like as this one starts to develop you get more of that like dark green herbal patchouli nothing damp nothing earthy nothing 
mold like you know because how to say like um, patchouli in certain fragrances depending on what's mixed with it can give you this type of feel so you have this deep herbal greenness but not too too herbal look i'm not the biggest fan of herbal fragrances and i'm not the biggest fan of really strong overpowering green facets in fragrances i find them for my taste quite challenging i'm not really the biggest fan of them but i feel like here it's balanced i could definitely wear this fragrance without the greenness overpowering the fragrance but as a reference you should appreciate patchouli in your fragrances to fully appreciate this fragrance even though how to say like this fragrance is not made around patchouli patchouli is not the star of the show but it's quite a pro prominent or like quite a present facet to the fragrance so you have the patchouli in the base but you also have this rich like how to say thick rich slightly warm but very dense woody accord quite quite deep at the same time but you have these two facets, how to say, behind the pineapple, behind the fruitiness, behind the sweetness in a way. So it's not like you get the patchouli and the really rich woody accord with some fruity facets in the background. I feel like it's the other way around. Even though, how to say, like sometimes when I smell it, I get more of the woody accord uh, with the patchouli. Other times when I smell it, I get more the pineapple. But even when I get the woody, no, woody no, the woody accord with the patchouli, it doesn't overpower the muted sweetness of the pineapple, let's say, you know? To me, this fragrance is in harmony. It's quite a balanced fragrance. It's a fragrance, honestly, compared to Madawi, I feel like this definitely leans, I don't wanna say more masculine because I feel like women could easily pull off this fragrance, but um, strictly comparing it to Madawi, it does lean slightly more unisex. I mean, men could wear this fragrance much easier, let's just say, men who are not really into fruity fragrances or like sweet fragrances, then they could wear Madawi, you know? It's a very interesting fragrance and I kept, like, like I told you, I kept smelling this fragrance again and again and again and I kept getting something so familiar, but I just like, I couldn't pinpoint what I was actually smelling it, you know, that, or like what was it actually reminding me of? It's like a deeper, darker, richer, more robust Madawi from Arabian Wood. And when you look at the notes, because after I realized that it reminded me of Madawi, I actually, uh, I will insert the notes here for both fragrances. You can see that even if you were to look at the notes, you can see the similarities, you can see the Madawi DNA in the notes they listed, but with an added patchouli, with an added oak moss, I think they listed an oud accord. Now I get, I get the oud-like accord, but to me it's more like a rich, but like a very rich, robust woody feel, you know, it's not like that barnyard wood or that animalic wood or that like funky PC kind of wood. No, it's more of a rich woody accord, I feel like. Look, performance, again, I haven't tried this fragrance on my skin, like timing it and everything, but usually, in all honesty, I don't have issues with fragrances from Ahmed El Maghribi when it comes to the performance. I find the majority of them are so oily that they even stick to my skin and usually fragrances don't last on my skin. Um, I do think that you will get more than four hours with this fragrance on your skin longevity wise on clothes I haven't tried it but look I feel like to appreciate this fragrance you need to appreciate hmm I don't know if I would say this is a safe blind buy simply because how to say like to me I think they marketed this fragrance for women but to me it's quite an androgynous fragrance it's something like not that it smells similar scent wise, but it gives me the same feel to Ebony Woods from Zara. Not scent wise, just like the energy in a sense, you know. You have some facets that might lean a little bit more masculine, you have some facets that might lean a bit more feminine, but I feel like it's more of an androgynous, like. It's more of an androgynous fragrance, you know, it's more of a modern androgynous kind of fragrance that doesn't pull too, too feminine, neither too, too masculine. You know, it doesn't go into any of the directions let's just say uh this is magic udin kalimat now yeah from paris corner let's see this fragrance in all honesty i had it for such a long time i even forgot about the samples but when i was like um organizing my samples i came uh I found it again, basically I found this one and the sandalwood one and I was like, why not include them in a video? Now this to me, I don't know what it's meant to be inspired by, if I'm not mistaken, it's meant to be inspired by a fragrance from Arabian Wood that I haven't tried, but looking at the notes, to me, the notes of this fragrance don't represent how this fragrance actually smells like in reality. And again, like I told you about 
uh, sandalwood when I was talking about that fragrance. Don't judge this fragrance too quickly, believe me. The opening of this fragrance is not the smoothest one. It's quite rough, it's quite cheap smelling, it's quite alcohol, it's quite sharp, but the heart and from the heart till the dry down, this fragrance is so beautiful, you guys. Basically, when you spray this fragrance in the opening, it's sweet. To me, it smells to me, it smells like you're baking cookies, honestly. Like legit, like you are baking cookies in your kitchen, like you're preparing your ingredients. You have, you take almond essence. To me, it smells a lot like almond essence. I don't know where I get this one, this vibe from. Like almond essence mixed with, mixed with something like buttery, biscuity in a sense in the background. Mixed with a sharp alcohol blast that almost like stings your nose a bit, a bit more. Um, and it's almost like you don't know if the alcohol is from the alcohol they used uh, for the fragrance or if, if it comes from like a boozy rum-like type of accord, you know, but it's, it's present and it's like cuts your nose a bit, you know, when you smell it. Uh, so this is why I say the opening is not the smoothest one, but it, get, it does get a lot better. Yeah, as this one starts to develop on the skin, I feel like that sharp blast of alcohol fades away completely. The fragrance opens up much more. I feel like it goes slightly more warm. I still detect that like almond essence type of feel. I still get that like gourmand, how to say like buttery, biscuity uh, type of facet in the background. But I also detect a slight soft, dry, woody accord with a beautiful vanilla that I feel like adds a little bit of sweetness, adds a little bit of roundness, of warmth as well. So it does have gourmand facets. To me, this fragrance does lean quite gourmand. It's warm, it's sweet, it's very dense, it's quite delicious in a sense. I mean, it smells, it smells edible, but not, not the most refined gourmand fragrance, but it has gourmand facets. Yes, yeah, slightly powdery as well. I really love how it smells from the heart till the dry down. Um, I feel like as the top notes faded and as this fragrance got a bit better uh, and a bit more refined, a bit smoother, you know, less sharp and rough. To me, if you love fragrances like Moatar Dahab, if you love fragrances like Golden Sand by Al Rehab, I would categorize this fragrance among these kind of fragrances. It doesn't smell like Moatar Dahab, but if you enjoy Moatar Dahab, you will enjoy this fragrance for sure. But in the dry down, like in the last bits of the dry down, it actually reminds me quite a lot of the opening of a... Uh, the golden sand oil from Al Rehab, you know, it's slightly vanillic, but a really beautiful, sweet, dense vanilla with some powdery facets. I still get it like buttery biscuity facet, but here on paper, how to say it's more, it's more flat. I feel like on my skin, it develops much more beautiful. It gets much denser, much warmer as well. So yeah, overall, I think it's a beautiful fragrance. Again, test it for yourself. If you have a very sensitive nose, you might pick up the sharpness a lot. Um, but I feel like after the opening, this one is pretty beautiful. And if I were to tell you which one I prefer between this one and the sandalwood one, this one for sure. To me, the sandalwood one is, yeah, it's not really worth it for me, honestly. Mm. This legit smells like you're baking cookies in your kitchen, you know, like homemade cookies, you know, like with the cookie dough, with the slight buttery sweetness, with some like almondy vanillic facets, but you also have some like soft woody accords in the background. Yeah, between this one and Moatar Dahab, like if I were to choose, uh, I prefer Moatar Dahab, but again, this one on its own, it's a beautiful fragrance from the heart uh, till the dry down. But from the heart till the dry down, it smells so delicious, so gourmand, like it, it legit smells like I told you, like you're baking cookies in the kitchen. Um, and not, not just like you're baking cookies, you get some like woody facets, perhaps from like the countertop, I don't know, something, something gives me the vibe that you're baking cookies, you know. Uh, okay, let's see what we have left. I think we have two fragrances, yes, let me. Okay, this is Ser El Malika from La Tafa. Again, this is the fragrance that I had a sample of that I completely forgot that I have it until someone left me a comment and they asked me if I have tried this fragrance and if I could tell them how it smells like to me, like a few weeks ago, if I remember correctly. And that's when I remembered that, oh my God, I actually have this fragrance and I looked it through my decant collection uh, and I tried it again. And in all honesty, now I got a whole different experience with this fragrance. First time I tried it, to me, it smelled smelled flat, it smelled 
It didn't smell... Look, when it comes to affordable fragrances, there are some like true hidden gems that they are very affordable, but they smell definitely much more luxurious. But other affordable fragrances, you can tell they are affordable, you know, even though like they smell great, but they are a tad flat, they are a tad sharp in a sense, you know, or my nose changed, I don't know, but first few times I tried it, I didn't like it, but now I feel like more than a year and a half, a year or something, more than a year later when I tried it again, I actually do enjoy it now. Yeah, see this opens up with some like sweet citruses, a slight saffrony facet, a red rose, some caramel in the background. So it's quite warm, it's quite sweet, it's quite full, it's quite dense. But very sweet and beautiful. Now I, I don't know guys, maybe it's because the, the sample got to stay or it got to macerate. I don't know why, but now it's definitely much better than how it was when I first tried it. I don't get that like flat cheapness from the fragrance, you know? Now it's definitely much denser, much fuller. Look, if you enjoy Oud Mood, you will enjoy this fragrance. Imagine Oud Mood with some like green apple freshness, with some like sweet citruses. I feel like without the incense, with more caramel and the rose is more pronounced, this is the feel it gives me. On its own, it's a beautiful fragrance. Imagine, like I said, Oud Mood with like a, some sweet citruses that like green apple freshness, the red rose is more pronounced without the incense and with a bit more caramel, I feel like. Quite warm, quite dense, quite full, quite rosy, but the rose has a slight spicy tinge, you know, it's almost like a slight saffrony spiciness. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. Definitely leans more feminine than masculine. Now, let's move on to the last fragrance because uh, I, uh, I don't have a lot of time left, honestly. This is Mocha Wood from Paris Corner for, or from Fragrance World. I don't remember correctly. Now look, this honestly smells just like Roses Vanille, like a fusion between Roses Vanille and Intense Cafe from... Mancera and from Montal. So if you like those fragrances, you will enjoy this fragrance as well. The only downside is that now I feel like you can find this DNA everywhere, like everywhere. You have Rose Gourmand from Zara, you have Tifal Hab from Ardell Zafran, you have Atiabel Marshoud, Marshoud for Black, you have the Hab Safi by Betel Bahor. That fragrance, this one, the Hab Safi, it's my favorite one, besides the two OG ones, besides Roses Vanille and Intense Cafe. Uh, but this one is a beautiful one nonetheless, beautiful one. Let's see. Again, slightly more alcohol in the opening. Imagine like you mix the you mix the sugariness from Rose's Vanille with the red rose from Intense Cafe, but like that sweet vanillic leading red rose with the sugariness from Rose's Vanille and with that like strong musky facet. Um, you stretch out the DNA a bit more because it's definitely a bit more diluted. But I feel like it smells beautiful. If you enjoy these two fragrances, you will enjoy this fragrance. Now, like I told you, my favorite one from the inspirations is the Hab Safi uh, by uh, Afnan or like a sub-brand of Afnan. But this one, again, on its own, it's a beautiful fragrance. But if you have a lot of inspirations, I do think it's redundant to get this one as well because they are so similar, you know. But this is why I say it's like a fusion because the rose is not like that pink rose that you have in Roses Vanille. It's more that like red rose but without any greenness, more like a sweet vanillic red rose mixed with the sugariness from Roses Vanille and with that very strong musky facet. Yeah, it's beautiful, you guys. Performance is not the best. I feel like four hours tops on my skin. On clothes, I haven't tried it, but it's so affordable that you could like carry a decant, you could like put it in your purse, you know? I feel like this one performs similar to how Tifal Hub from Ardel Zafaran performs. Um, and I will give you the same piece of advice that I gave when I was talking about that fragrance. Buy it with the thought in mind that you're buying a body, a body spray, not a body lotion, like a body spray, like an eau de toilette, you know, and then you will be surprised with the performance. But if you buy this one expecting to buy the next Beast Mode fragrance, honestly, I think you will be disappointed. But look, if you have the budget, I would advise you to go for, uh, with either Intense Cafe or Roses Vanille, simply because now you can get them online for amazing prices and those actually last. They perform very well, so you won't have the performance issue, you know. They project, they leave a beautiful sillage, they last a long time. Roses Vanille lasts forever on my skin. Intense Cafe, not really. 
I mean, it does last for a good few hours, but not really like roses bunny, but it's definitely a fragrance that is noticeable, you know, like people will smell it when you walk past them or like when they walk past you. Yeah, again, it's beautiful. I'm not so surprised when I'm smelling this because this is like the 10th fragrance that I'm smelling with the same DNA and I do love this DNA but it's it's a bit redundant at the moment but from the um, from the inspirations that I've tried honestly I think this one is a little bit better than Rose Gourmand from Zara the maskiness from Rose Gourmand is slightly sometimes overpowering the other facets you know the rose the sugariness whereas here I feel like the musky facet is in the background you get the red rose, then you get a slight vanilla creamy sweetness, then you get the sugariness that's quite pronounced. It almost has this like sugary texture, you know, that like gritty texture in a sense. And then the mask. So yeah, uh, okay. Those were my thoughts about these fragrances. I don't know, nine, ten fragrances. I don't know how many I've tried. If you have any questions about any of these fragrances in particular, maybe I have forgot to touch upon the performance of a fragrance or about the gender, or if you have in general any questions about all of these fragrances feel free to leave your questions down below and i promise that i will get back to you also if you have tried any of these fragrances you guys i would love to hear your feedback on the fragrances please let me know what you think about them please let me know if you enjoy them please let me know how do you find the performance for these fragrances if any of the fragrances from today's video caught your interest let me know that down below i would love that so yeah uh what else don't forget to follow me on instagram <laughs> Here is my handle. I will see you in my next video, guys. Uh, I'm sorry if the video, the end of the video was a bit rushed, but I, I'm quite in a hurry and I have to go. I will see you in my next video, but until then, thank you so much for watching, you guys, and I want to wish you an amazing day wherever you are. Bye.